thank you very much. I'm glad to be here today and uh, get involved in this very important discussion because it's been ongoing for a good many years and I've spoken out on this issue many times. Of course, I spoke out on the issue of Iraq uh, for approximately uh, five years before we went into Iraq because I sensed as early as 1998 that we were on the road to war against Iraq. And uh, I felt the same way over the last several years with, uh, with Iran. And our policies uh, in these last several years I, I consider a disaster the way we have been dealing with the Middle East. Because uh, it seems like we have offered uh, our friends and enemies about two options. Uh, we go to them and we uh, insist they do such and such. And if they do, uh, we reward them with giving them a lot of money. And if they don't, we end up uh, threatening them, putting on sanctions and uh, embargoes, and, and then bombing them. And there, there has to be another, another option. Uh, not either bribe them or bomb them. We have to talk to them and to all the peoples of the world. And this is in the most dangerous spot right now because of this type of foreign policy we have is with the Iranians. So to me, it's, it's critical for our country to deal with this. Uh, just a couple days ago on Friday, there was a threat uh, in the Middle East that if, uh, if the Iranians didn't do exactly as we said, uh, that uh, Israel would attack. And when Israel threatens to attack, that means America threatens to attack. And what happened to the market? The dollar goes down, and gold goes up, oil prices go up $11 a barrel. And everybody's talking about the price of oil, uh, why it is. It, it's, uh, some people say, well, it's just people making profits. Uh, and they fail to look at the fact that oil prices go up because the dollar is going down because we print too much money. But at the same time, it's foreign policy too. There's been a fear factor built into into uh, the price of oil because of the disturbance in the Middle East. So you can't divorce the economic crisis we have in this country, in particular the rising cost of oil and energy, with our foreign policy. Because when we went in to uh, Iraq in 2003 to protect, so-called protect our oil, oil was $26 a barrel, and now it's $126 a barrel. No, and and uh, we're, we're continuing to pursue this policy. I consider this policy and these threats immoral, unconstitutional, not legal under international law, and very, very dangerous. It makes no sense whatsoever. And uh, when, when you think, well, the argument is, that maybe someday these bad people are going to have a big weapon. Even though we have no evidence that they've been working on a nuclear weapon since 2003. But, you know, in my case, I almost say, so they have a nuclear weapon. I mean, it'd be horrible, but what about the Soviets? They had 40,000 nuclear weapons. They had 90 miles off our shore. They had intercontinental ballistic missiles. And what did we do? We talked to them. The day I was drafted into the military in 2000, or 1962, uh, President Kennedy talked to Khrushchev. We, we agreed, you know, we followed diplomacy, we agreed to remove our missiles from Turkey. And here today, we're not even willing to talk to the Iranians. Today there was an announcement that the United States has badged the European Union into putting stronger sanctions on the Iranians to freeze all their assets, to try to squeeze them. Sanctions and embargoes are initial acts of war because it's exactly what people do when war starts. You try to cut off supplies and ruin them economically. So these are actually acts of war when we do it against a country that has not literally threatened us. Yes, a lot of loud mouth, a lot of talk. But Khrushchev also told us he would bury us. He had nuclear weapons and couldn't. So put it in perspective is all I ask. And there's no reason in the world why we can't practice a little bit of diplomacy. We can't talk to people. And they say, well, we can't talk to our enemies. Well, that's the people we ought to be talking to. I mean, that's when you need diplomacy. So uh, hopefully uh, we'll wake up, but there seems to be an urgency. The markets are telling me that there's an urgency to do something before the end of this year. We have to do everything possible here in the Congress. The fact that we removed from legislation that, with, that had led instructions that the President can't do anything against the Iranians without permission of Congress was removed from the legislation. That's atrocious. And uh, at the same time, it was totally unnecessary. 
no president should go to war without consent of the Congress with a declaration of war. Yet we are now accepting the fact, just, you know, without hardly any question, that we go to war now. We've been doing it since World War II, and we can't allow this to happen. It's way too dangerous, and that is the message that we're hearing today. So our side, who maintains that we ought to talk to people who live within the law, our law and international law, means that we have a lot of work to do. But if we want peace and prosperity in the world, we have to approach our foreign policy differently because financially this is going to come down on our heads. And no matter how strong they may argue from the moral viewpoint that we have to do this, it's impossible to do it. The Soviets collapsed for the financial reasons. We will as well. And that is what the markets are telling us, and the dollar is so weak, and our prices are going up, and our economy is in shambles, and that means we eventually won't be able to afford it, so we might as well just admit it and act within the law and not continue to threaten these countries, and in this case, especially Iran. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Paul. I'd now like to invite Ibrahim Naruzi. Um, he's with the Mosaddegh Project uh, and also an Iranian-American. Uh, I'm an Iranian-American and I have a very short message. Uh, the fact that Iran and U.S. do not talk to each other absolutely makes no sense. There's nothing more uh, that Iran and, and America they have so much in common in terms of interests. If Iran and America really get together and become in a friendly term, many, many issues would be solved. Starting with the oil flow and oil in the Middle East. Afghanistan, the issue of Afghanistan, the issue of Iraq, the issue of Lebanon and Hezbollah, the issue of Palestine, Hamas, is absolutely in the interest of America really to, uh, actually there's more interest for America than even for Iran to talk to each other. So my suggestion, my humble uh, plea is, please talk to them because it, uh, in the long run, a lot of these issues would be solved. The same way that in 2003, the Iranian government approached America with a proposal to issue, to talk about all these issues, including Hamas, including Israeli-Palestinian issue, including Iraq, and, and all the issues on the table, unfortunately the U.S. Uh, uh, rebuffed it and did not, did not take advantage of it. But it's never too late before it becomes too late. Please, please, U.S., Iran, talk to each other. And it's up to us people of both countries, Iran and Americans, to really pursue this issue and fight for it. Thank you very much.